Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I know it's been a really long time. And for that, I apologize. But my house is really loud and um, I am really busy. <laughs> this is, um, welcome to my travel trailer. Um, we just bought it to go camping. It's really going to be the only way that our huge family can ever vacation anywhere. And I'm trying to get the glare off my glasses. Here. Is that working? Um, yeah, I I figured it'd be a good place to film because it's quiet and there's no children in here. They're all inside sleeping or doing schoolwork. So um, I'm going to try to bust out a, a little bit of a family update for you. Um, yesterday was Easter and we had a blast and uh, it was bittersweet which i'll explain why later but let me just show you uh the fun that we had um but first let me preface this with a little a little video um we have two new baby lambs on our farm mm, yeah both boys um very cute um the sad part is that all three of our girls had baby boys this year but the first lamb to be born died on birth and it was horribly depressing but the other two are healthy and happy and adorable and let me show you them let's go see the sheep come on yeah, sheep. let's go see the baby sheep baby sheep doo -doo 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 -doo. baby sheep doo -doo. go you can walk out i'll follow you hi you gotta ask ruby come on let's go see the baby sheep so last night a baby sheep was born it was the second sheep born. The first one was uh, about four days ago, and unfortunately, that one died at birth because that mama got it got stuck, and I didn't know she was in labor. I didn't even know they were pregnant for sure because they didn't have lambs last year. And um, anyways, he died. But the second lamb was born last night at a very appropriate time, at eight o'clock at night. So I was able to put the kids to bed, go deliver the lamb. And he was fine as frog's hairs. Guys, come here. So that dark sheep, she's still pregnant. This is the one that lost the lamb. Where is mama sheep? She must be in the, there she is. There's mama sheep. Hello, where's your baby? Where's baby? Where's baby? Where's baby, where's baby huh? I wanna see baby. I do not want kids in the pen, so we're going this way. Okay. Show you baby. There he is. Hey baby. Uh uh. Oliver, watch your head. Here. Y'all see there. Oh, hi, Mama. Hi. Remember me? We spent a lot of time together last night. Hi. Told you four oh, times for your jacket on. Hi, sheepy. <laughs> oh, you heard mama. See, where's mama? Mama, I, I got you, baby. I mean, how cute is that, right? So, um, anyways, Michael had the brilliant idea that for Easter we should take pictures with the kids with the lamb, which was great for the kids that wanted to do it. Um, Hezekiah, mm, no, he was not down with that. He said no. So he said no, the other kids said yes. So here we have all the kids getting to play with the lamb. You know, it was cute. hunts 
and we have like one area for the little kids, one area for the big kids, and one area for the wheelchair kiddos, so Hannah and Hezekiah, so that they could roll around. It had to be flat for them to navigate it, and there's only a little bit that's flat. It was a little bit muddy this year. It was, we've had some crazy weather in the last month, but um, they had fun hunting for eggs, so. Go get eggs. Do you want me to help you? Go get them. They're candy filled. Gonna yeah. go get some. Where do you see one? You gotta roll up to it and pick it up. They're down, they're tall enough for you to reach. Look down in front of yourself. Here's your bucket. Look, in the bucket when look down in front of yourself. Look down at the ground. Okay. Hezekiah, are you gonna get that egg? Go get it. Get it. Good job. You got an egg. What's inside there? You want to see? It's candy. Oh, do you want that? And I think you just ran an egg over. It was right in front of you. And you ran it over. Keep looking. Look around for other ones. Uh oh, where'd it go, Kaya? Good job. Do you want me to open it? You need to get closer. Good job, guy. I found another one. Did you find another egg? But you dropped your first one. If you knew what was in here, I don't think you would do that. Want me to open it? What is that? Food snacks. Oh, you love food snacks. Look. You found These it. are Hannah's eggs and Hezekiah's eggs. You already got your eggs. What did you get in your bucket? Let me see. Oh, that is a lot. You did a good job. Oh, this just doesn't kind of it. It's just what? It doesn't kind of it. The big kids are all hunting for their eggs. Well, the while we have the two wheelchair kiddos where they can grab tall eggs in the flat ground. And then we have the little toddlers hunt over there on that little ridge where they could Stay in a contained area. And it's going to work pretty well. Do you see one down there? I don't see one down there. Yeah. Unless you rolled over it. You got to look so around. Back to um, bittersweet. And why would I say that word? Well, this year whew, was has been a doozy. Um, in December, like one day before my daughter that died, Aquila, her birthday, which is December 19th. That's the day that my, um, the baby that I had that died at birth was born. Um, the day before that, so it was going to be the 11th anniversary of her death. The day before that, December 18th, uh, we got a new foster child placed with us. Um, when I say foster child, it was not through like state CPS. It was actually a private situation through a private agency. So they call that cradle care. And, but it's basically, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it is the same thing. The child is placed temporarily with you um, while they decide what they're going to do with the child. And um, we understood it and were understood that we were picked because we had the heart to adopt her. Um, that is not how it panned out. I cannot discuss, you know, reasons, but it was nothing of our fault, nothing of her fault, really. It's just, uh, it ended up not being allowed for her, us to adopt her. So she has to go in a week. So this is our last big thing with her Easter yesterday. And that was, it was bittersweet. Um, definitely. Um, Christmas was so much fun because we were full of hope and promise. Brand new child. We got to just like spoil her rotten. And we've had so much fun with her over the last three and a half months. Um, she's darling sweet. And um, I will pray for her every day from now on because she's to me one of my kids. And I'm very sad to see her go. Um, but boy, has it been a busy three and a half months. Oh my goodness. Cause she is right around the age of Judah and Novena. She's a little bit bigger, but she's 
developmentally and like attitude wise, right, right in the mix with them. So the three of them, I call them the triplets because they're constantly together getting into all kinds of manner of whatever naughty or fun they can think of. <laughs> but <laughs> it's been very, very busy for me, but fun. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm very sad to see her go. Um, that's definitely been the, the sh overshadowing thing over the last, you know, December, January, February, March was that we had this other child and we were trying to make this work and, um, uh, for un undiscussable reasons that are beyond our control, we could not make it work. So, um, she's leaving in like a week and I'm very sad. So that's an update about the family. Um, Ezra is doing great. He is so freaking cute. I have to show you. He is, um, is he six months yet? Goodness. He's about five and a half months and he can starting to try to sit up and he puts everything in his mouth and you absolutely cannot hold him if you have anything hot or dangerous because he grabs everything. He is so fast. He just swipes it and grabs it and puts it in his mouth. So you have to be very careful with that little boy. And he is the biggest kicker of any baby I've ever seen. I always wondered why they have those baby toys where they kick at them and they light up because my babies were never that interested in it. This baby, oh my gosh, he will kick anything. One day I was sitting there doing coupons and with paper coupons that come in the mail and I had a stack next to me. I had him on my lap nursing and he kicked out his foot one time and it crinkled the newspaper and then he popped off, got super excited and started just kicking his feet, bam, 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 and kicking it, crumbling, crumbling. And he was just cooing and kicking for 20 minutes until every paper was just a crumpled, garbled mess. And he was so proud of himself hilarious that kid is so funny um let me show you uh just some, how cute he is right now you gotta see this hey Ezra. i'm gonna get you uh, boom. Uh, boom. Uh, boom. Uh, He's so cute. What are you spinning around for? Jump, jump, jump. <laughs> Boom. I mean, really, is he not the most cute kid ever? Um, but moving on to other cute kids who are also the cutest kid ever. There's Hezekiah who um, we had a big scare with him in, um, I believe it was January. Whew, big scary thing. He had an anaphylactic reaction to cashews. Wow, I do not have any kids with like serious allergies. I've got several lactose intolerant children. We drink a lot of lactate. We do a lot of like nut milks and stuff, but Anyways, he's had peanut butter and almond milk um, multiple times since he was a baby. Um, so uh, since he's been eating peanut butter since a baby, I never even thought of other allergies as being an issue. Well, one day I go to Aldi's and I see they have cashew butter and I'm like, ooh, yummy. That looks really good. I love cashews. And I do cook cashews for older kids all the time, but I realized he had never eaten them because you don't give the, I, I give him food that we're eating, but if it has something like a cashew, cashews in it, like stir fry, I'll throw cashews in it. I would never give him that because it's too much chewing. Um, he just now has his molars. So I'm like, now is the time I would introduce that, but I had never given him, I've never given him nuts. So I'm real careful about choking hazards. So I had not given him actual nuts. He'd eaten peanut butter. He'd had almond milk. He had almond butter. Um, but anyways, I gave him cashew butter for lunch because I got it at Aldi's. It was on sale and it looked really yummy. Anyways, like 20 minutes later, Sebastian brings him over to me. He's like, he won't stop scratching his ear, mom. He looks really uncomfortable. And he's like, ah, ah. he was um, turning red and his ear was like, there were like little bumps behind it, like almost like bug bites. That's what it looked like. I'm like, what is going on? And I'm like, but he's really, I'm like, here, just sit him on the couch next to me. And I sat him down next to me and I'm watching him and he's just rubbing, rubbing. And as I'm watching these little bumps get bigger and they start spreading and I start seeing little bumps all over and it just spreads 
all around his mouth, all over here, down, and then they start turning into what's obviously hives, like they're raised, big, red bumps. He's starting to look bad. He's starting to swell around his mouth. His eyes were swelling. He was like rubbing and rubbing, and everything starts swelling up, and this is what he looked like. Honey, let me see your hair, your ears. They got all red and splotchy. Let me see your eyes. They're all itchy. So at that point, I'm like, get Benadryl now. And the kids bring me the Benadryl. Well, actually, not the kids. I don't know why I just said that. Michael brings me the Benadryl. And um, I'm like, give him the Benadryl. And then I said, Michael, I'm getting worried about him. And then I'm like, kind of like I'm holding him. And, and I realize he's starting to wheeze a little bit. And I'm like, uh, he's got to go to the ER now. And of course, because of COVID, you can't take anybody else. We, for a kid going to the ER, it's only one parent. That's it. And they won't let me bring a nursing baby, Ezra, who's still nursing. So I'm like, ER trips can be hours. He could be admitted. I can't go with him um, because I can't take Ezra and I don't know how long I'll be gone. So I said, Michael, you've got it. Luckily, Michael was home. This was on a weekend. I'm like, you got to take him to the ER because uh, I just gave him the Benadryl, which will take like 15, 20 minutes to kick in. But we got to start driving. I'm worried. I don't even want to wait for an ambulance. I want you to just because we're 30 minutes from the hospital. So if we wait for an ambulance, we wait for 30 minutes for them to get there. I'm like, just start driving. And if he gets worse, I sent Sebastian in the car to sit next to him in the back. If he gets worse, if he breathing gets worse, then just stop and call an ambulance where you're at. But um, so he took off with him um, with Sebastian sitting in the back watching Kaya. And I had Sebastian FaceTime me on his phone so I could see Kaya the whole drive so I could look at him and make sure he was not getting worse. By the time they got there in 30 minutes, the Benadryl had kicked in and he was, uh, his, his swelling was going down and he was still had, but you still see the hives, but, um, he gets in, they take him right back and they said, um, that, uh, the, they were like, well, he doesn't look very bad. And my husband pulls up his phone and shows him the pictures and was like, this is what he looked like. And they were like, oh, wow. Yeah, that is definitely an anaphylactic reaction. So, um, they monitored him. They gave him a steroid shot. They monitored him for like an hour. And then they, uh, gave us a, a referral to allergy. They wouldn't give us a, an EpiPen, which I was like, what? And I tell you what, when I finally got into the allergist, which was lucky, they got us in five days later, which was great. But when I got into the allergist, he was so mad. He said, I don't understand why the ER will not give a prescription for an EpiPen. He said, it's ridiculous. They've had several people tell me this, but if you know a child has had an anaphylactic reaction, send them home with an EpiPen prescription. There's no reason for them to wait to see me to get that. But so fast forward, you know, five days later, we get into the allergist and he's um, super great, helpful. And he does a, um, like, a allergy test on Hezekiah's back where they do the little pricks for um, cashews and pistachios, which he said are linked. Like, so if you're allergic to one, they, then you're allergic to the other one. But you can be, like, um, I don't think you can be allergic to just one. But they still test for both. Um, and then they tested for... Um, what is that? Oh, pecans and walnuts, which he said are linked to each other as well. And they tested for actually for cats and dogs, which was crazy. And I think a few more things. Anyways, he, he pricks his back and then we wait around um, until, you know, Kaya starts hopefully showing um, some kind of reaction is what they're looking for. And there's like little bubbles appear on their skin where the ones they have reactions are and he had definite bubbles by pistachios and cashews he also had bubbles on dogs and cats and small bubbles on uh, walnuts and pecans so what the doctor wanted to do was take his blood and get um like to get an amount like how allergic you are they do like a blood test so he did a, an allergic test for his blood to see how allergic to pistachios, um, cashews, walnuts, and pecans he was. Because he said if it's really high, he knows that they're he's not going to outgrow it. But if it's like lower, then we could um, keep testing him every year and see if he's outgrown it. So um, we were sent to get the blood work. And then those test results came back a few days later. And the allergist said, well, he's definitely positive for 
um, cashews and um, pistachios, which we already knew. He needs to avoid those. Um, but his allergy to pecans and walnut is a maybe. And so we need to do a test where we actually feed it to him in the office and watch him. So we did an office test. Now this is a five hour thing. And so again, nursing baby, they won't let me bring him. So Michael has to take him. So they, so he did it with, he, he couldn't eat beforehand. And then they give him these little tiny cups of little tiny amount that he can mix in a little tiny yogurt and then eat these little tiny crushed things. He was so hungry and it was so sad, but he is also adorable in his little Bella's Bumba wheelchair that he got for Christmas that is amazing. And I'll show you some more videos of him, but first you have to see how cute he was at his little um, nut allergy test. One, two, three. Bumba. Say one. <laughs> Two. Uh, go. Three. <laughs> Say one. Go. Two. Three. You can't have it anymore. It's on the ground. Do you want another one? Kaya? Where did Kaya go? Oh no! Where is he? Where's Kaya? Did he go hide? <gasps> did Kaya go away? Oh no. Where is he? There he is! <laughs> there he is! There he is! So the results from that test were that and no, he is not allergic to pecans or walnuts, but because he showed like elevated um, reactions to them, he has to be given it every, every week, either one, walnuts or pecans, every week at least. He gets one dose kind of. I give him like some crackers um, that have walnuts in them, or I give him some walnut bread or some pecan pie or something that has that. So that's the plan for that. Uh, we have EpiPens now for his cashew and pistachio. And we basically had to take them out of the house. Because I can't give them to their kids because they spill nuts. Like, every they spill everything. But, like, say I give them cashews and a snack. There's going to be cashews on the floor. And Kaya rolls around on the floor and crawls around on the floor. So if he found one nut, we would be having to give an EpiPen and then going to the ER. So... I basically have to take them out of all the kids' diets, which really stinks because we did eat a lot of pistachios and cashews before. Well, the kids did, not not babies, obviously, but um, it's definitely changed our, our eating habits a bit. And um, yeah, like I was saying, Hezekiah got a, a Bumba wheelchair and they are the coolest um, nonprofit. It's called Bella's Bumbas. I'll link them in the um, description. They um, make wheelchairs for babies, particularly, I guess, the original creator's daughter had spina bifida. They make them for kids with spina bifida and other mobility issues that um, are babies. When insurance won't give you a wheelchair and you wouldn't want to waste your one wheelchair in five years on a baby because it wouldn't last for five years, but it gives them mobility. And Kaya can crawl, but he is nowhere close to walking. And he, the minute he was in that thing, he knew what to do right away. Like he, this is him a few minutes after getting it. Set, go. Come on, Kaya. Go, come on. Kaya, go, Kaya. Come here. Can I yeah. try it out? Can I? Go, 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 go. Good job. Good job turning. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Turn, 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 turn. turn. Good job. Yeah. Come here. Oh, you're so fast. Come here. Come on! Turn, turn, turn! That club paper is throwing you off, isn't it? There you go, you got past it. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come here! Uh oh, he's coming to me! Come here, baby! You're ready to get you! Shoot a move! Shoot a move! Come here! You did it! You came to mama! Yay! Yeah. So, as you can see, he knows exactly how to get around in this thing. And, you know, now I take him to any appointment in it. I just put a little pole in the back and I can push him in the, I tell him, put your hands up and I push him through the parking lot. And then when we get inside, he can 
roll around, which is so cute. Kaya, okay. show me your spin. Spin. Do it. Ready, set, go. Spin. Spin. Yes. Spin. 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 You're fast. Hi, dude. Are we gonna get new shoes? Where do your shoes go? Where do your shoes go? Where are your shoes? You gonna go find them? Where are your feet? That's right. We're gonna get new shoes. Are you gonna take off your socks? And um, this company, this nonprofit that does this, they don't charge any money, guys. They do this for free. This is a nonprofit. People donate and they, all you have to pay for is shipping. So it was like 60 bucks to get a ship. But I mean, for a wheelchair for my kid that will fit him until he's three, probably. Um, it has increased his quality of life greatly because he can do so much that he couldn't do before. And he loves his chair. He'll be fussing. And I'll be like, do you want your chair? And he's like, chair. And then I go put him in his chair. Uh, yeah, guys, he is talking so much. That kid is chatterbox and it's adorable. <laughs> I love, I love the toddler. I love toddlers. And he often gets mistaken as a, more as a baby because, you know, when you're carrying him around and he's not toddling around, people aren't seeing him as a toddler. But when he's in his wheelchair, people see him as a toddler because he's rolling around getting into stuff and um, he's so good in it. Everyone's like, wow he's so fast in that thing and he like maneuvers around things like like an expert roadster racer like it's very cute um it gives it, everyone a different perspective on him which is really good for him because he is a toddler i mean he is he's not he's one and a half he's not he's not a baby um so that's really good for him so um let me think what other updates do i have Hannah um, is now six months post SDR surgery and um, it's really hard guys. I wish she had had that surgery um, as a young child instead of as a child who now is going through puberty um, right after doing it. She's put on 20 pounds since um, the surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Almost 20 pounds since the surgery and um, her body has changed so much that it's like not only is her body different because of the surgery, but her body's different because of puberty. And that just makes, plus she's kind of like, you know, a grump because of that. Um, she's a very hormonal teenager, even though she's got like, a, uh, she, the, she's got the attitude of a teenager and the understanding of like a three to five year old. And so you put that together into a body that doesn't feel right to her. And then she just had this major surgery and she has to do like three therapies a week. And, um, we have a lot of attitude, but she's still making improvements. I mean, I don't want to discount that. She spends like three to four days a week in her walker at home instead of in her chair.
she's doing much better at that. She's doing way better at her therapies. Her, she's definitely improving in strength. Um, I'm still, I don't regret the surgery. I just wish, I wish so badly that she had been able to have it as a young child. I wish that she had had therapy. I hate that she missed out on all that because she was in an orphanage. Um, it makes me so mad, um, at the lack of medical care that she received. So mad, so mad. Um, I wish we could go save more of these kids. It's just ridiculously expensive and hard, um, to go do this, like to, to internationally adopt is no easy feat. So if you know people to try and internationally adopt, you should back them up because it is hard. <laughs> so, cause these kids need to get out. They need this medical care. They need love. They need attention. They need things so badly. So yeah, that's our family. Um, trying to think anything else interesting. Oh, I'm going to post a whole video about, um, something else that we, that is, I feel it's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. So thanks for, um, checking back in with us. Keep up with us. I promise that, um, I will try to post more videos now. <laughs> Let's go!